So this is for me to look back to for table data extraction. This is invoice data extraction, which extracts tables out of images and converts the data and stores it into a CSV. So this is the IPython notebook. So first we load the initial libraries and this is the image that we want to extract. This is the table that we want to extract. We don't want this text outside. So we convert it into a binary image and then we try out Otsu thresholding and we try out several different thresholding like both global and Otsu. Then we create a rectangular structural structuring element. We have morphological operations, so we create a new structuring element to perform erosion on the image. So first we can get the horizontal and vertical lines. So to get that, we will create a vertical kernel with kernel width one and height the number of columns in an image array divided by 200 or 100 or as many as whatever works out for the image or like generalized, whichever works out well, it's okay. Erosion makes uh, the pixel one only if all the pixels under that kernel are one. So that means it will make that pixel one only if that all the pixels under the vertical kernel are one. So that's how we will only get the vertical lines. We perform with uh, erosion with five iterations with the vertical kernel. We can do it for 10 or any number of iterations as works well before the trials. Next, we'll do the same thing for horizontal lines. We'll get a horizontal kernel and we'll get the horizontal lines, extract the table lines. Now we will add the two images to get the table outline. That is the different cells. Now we need to get the contours of the grid that we have obtained by adding the horizontal and vertical lines to get the coordinates of the different boxes of uh, that is the cells that once that is done and we have added it to our boxes list the xy that is the starting and uh, like xy coordinates with the width and height to get the rows and columns uh, we will add rows and columns we calculate the mean height of all the boxes initially we'll append the first list box to the columns list the columns list is essentially a temporary list. We assign the previous box to the first box as well. And now we will loop through all the remaining bounding boxes list. So at each iteration, we check if the Y coordinate of the top left corner of the current box is less than the Y coordinate of the previous box added with half the mean of all the heights. If yes, we append the current box to columns list. And if no, we append the columns list to rows. So that's how we get the box array. Okay. So next, that's how we get the rows and columns arrays. Okay. So next is we'll get the center of each cell which we take by taking the row coordinates, dividing uh, the minimum and the max, dividing them by two and the minimum Y and max Y and then dividing by two, we get the center. So we create a list of coordinates of the boxes and this is where I've printed it out for our test image, which is this. Yeah. So now we'll have to extract image from the boxes and get the contents using PyTesseract. We get the cell that is like the part of the image that is in that particular cell. And then we get the text that we get the image that is bounded by those coordinates. And then we extract the text and 
then store it in a data frame. So this is what the data frame looks like right now. And we create a data, from, data frame from the extracted data, which looks like this, which is similar to the image that we were trying it on. And simply we convert it into an output CSV, which will look something like this. So once the initial image is this, and the output CSV looks something like this. This is the CSV. So once uh, getting through all the code is done, we will look at creating the API for it. This is the table text extraction API. So here is the app.py file, which will contain all the inference code that we used in our Python notebook before so what we need is a requirements.txt file an app.py file a prop file an apt file and these are for the front end of the application so quick look at what the website looks like okay so this is the image dir where we have our test table image which looks like this this also has some text but we only want this part so first we'll take a look at app.py which has all the imports a uh, home page which is index.html this is the api which can be used with a curl request simply and this is the HTML GUI that is the front end of the application. So taking a look at the predict API, that is, it takes a file, it performs all the morphological operations and thresholding that we had performed before. It extracts the boxes and the contours. It gets the text, stores it into a data frame here and returns the data frame as a JSON. In JSON format, it returns. So we'll take a look at what it looks like with a curl request soon. And this is the, for the HTML GUI, that is for the front end. So here, when we go to home, index.html template is rendered. So what does index.html look like? Looks like this. Now going back, let's look at the code for index.html, which will be in the templates directory, which is important because it needs to be in certain directories to, for Flask to recognize it. Okay, so index, a very simple GUI with yeah so here we put the url for static to include our static files and another next we will uh, we have a nav bar as that can be seen from the website which is stable data extraction dot heroku app dot com so this is the nav bar it has a link to the home page and it has a link to contacts that is my LinkedIn here. Then we have a different container with some simple icons and some text under them, which I have used materialize, which is really nice. And finally, we have a form to enter the upload the PhD that is. So first we have uh, added a text that is upload the PNG image containing a table. So here's the form. The encryption type should be multi-part form data for it to accept an image. And action is URL for predict. That is the predict function that we wrote, which is responsible for 
uh, the HTML GUI rendering that is, it will provide the, like it will take the image in and then it will return some response. So it has a uh, input file type, which will be an option to upload. And next is the submit button, which can be clicked. So going back, now we have looked at index.html, coming back to app.py, we looked at the predict function. So in the predict function, it takes a file, request.files file, which takes our PNG image. So if you look at the logs for this, then you'll be able to see the file name printed on the console. Like if the name is image.png, image will be printed, image.png will be printed. So here we check if the file that we have got is of PNG type or not. If not, then we return wrong file type.html template, which is just as same as the index template, except the fact that it's written that you have entered the wrong file type, please upload a PNG. So if it is of PNG type, then this step will not happen and we'll continue to the code, to the thresholding, then the morphological operations to get the vertical and horizontal lines, and finally get the bounding boxes and the data frame. So here this is, we send a response to make the browser automatically download the CSV, which will be named as table.csv and we return it. So that's it. One more thing that we have defined here is we have to uh, like define the upload folder as image dir so that that image that we upload is stored there. Yes, this is the folder. So app.py we have looked at requirements.txt. This is mainly for Heroku. We have hosted it with Heroku. We'll take a look at that soon. And this is the proc file. This is again for Heroku. This is the app file. So some issues that I faced while doing this is that there was some, uh, some issue with Heroku and OpenCV. So these are the libraries that I had to include till from libgl1 to libarchive.dev. These are the ones that I had to include for the OpenCV error to go. And for Tesseract, I had to include these files. But then again, that was not enough as there's some issue with Heroku 20. So I had to make the stack Heroku 18 for this to work. Otherwise, again, Tesseract has some error. So that's it. Okay, the CSS files are very simple style.css file for the Flexbox and the images and the card. Yes, that's it. We have looked at everything. Yeah, and this is like, this is not, this can be tried out with the request library. You can test out the API endpoints. That's okay. Yes, that's it. This is a simple front end. This is that index.html page that we were looking at. So very simple, simple text. This is the container and these are those icons from materialize. And click on this button to choose the file, choose an image and then click on upload. And a CSV file will be automatically downloaded into your computer. So that's it for the front end. So in case you choose something other than a PNG, so let's try choosing something else. It will show wrong file type. Please select a PNG only. That's it. That's it for the front end. 